Hey guys, it's time to dive deep on Glenn Maxwell. I mean, the Melbourne Stars, uh, our predicted 11, all the squad news from the Melbourne Stars themselves, our hot and cold picks and tons more. Let's get started. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Welcome back to the Insight BBL show on the Insight Podcast Network. I am the super coach Brain, and you can find me on X at SC underscore Brain. And the big horse, Mickey Dell, is with me as always, mate. How are you going? This is a little bit more close to home for you, isn't it? Yeah, it is a little bit. Now, we're talking about uh, some Melbourne teams here, both who start with a very nice schedule. And uh, I think with both these next episodes that we're going to roll out, we'll find some very relevant super coach players. For sure, um, you know, make a little bit of a joke at the top of the show that it's uh, about Glenn Maxwell. And look, realistically, we probably won't talk about him much at all. But if you're going to take anything from this show, Glenn Maxwell should be 100% owned. And I think we'll probably just leave it there. He should be in your team if you take it seriously. Um, I'll give you a few stats a little bit later that kind of solidifies that choice. But he is currently 55% owned, which is wild that he's not 80%. <laughs> does, that, does that mean that... 45% of the community are picking their team with the screen off or what's uh, yeah, going could on? Just, could just be the autofill feature, maybe. Yeah. It's, uh, but even, regardless, even the auto, in. even yeah, even the autofill would have him in. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, it probably would. But, um, mate, uh, you know, we'll, we'll chat. We'll pr- try and convince the other 45% of the community today. Um, but, of course, guys, the show is brought to you by the Standard Squeeze Ryan from Astute Newstead and obviously our new sponsor that's come on board, Bonus Bank, and we'll give them all a shout-out throughout the show. Make sure to hit like as well just below you there and the subscribe button if you haven't yet so that you get the little bell. You can even turn notifications on and get a little notification every time we pop an episode up or go live, which we will be doing a lot throughout the season to wrap up the show and preview the next round. Now, uh, if you are listening to us on audio could be Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, whichever your podcast choice is, make sure to hit follow and leave us a review. Now, uh, if you haven't joined the Unlimited group yet, we are giving away plenty of prizes throughout the season as well as we always do. So make sure to join the code. It's 482267. The the link is in the description below as well. Uh, We're going to be giving away a Supercoach Champions ring to the winner as we we do every single year. And we're also going to be giving away weekly prizes for the top scorer, which is pretty cool. Thanks to our friends over at the Standard Squeeze Me. Rip a bunch of blokes they are over there. They've been behind us since day one and continue to do wonderful things. And if you um if you don't back yourself and you're mm-hmm. not sure whether you can win the week or anything like that, you can go on to ins- uh, the standardsquiz.com and you can use the code INSIGHT15 and it'll give you 15% off anything on their website. Um, from four and ones that we've got here, little combo packs that you can see in the background of both of us on YouTube. Um, you can get all your stuff there. They've got some uh, nice clothing there as well with a little squeeze brand on it. I'm wearing the shirt today. Uh, Mick's got the hat on. So uh, fully repping the brand at the moment. And uh, you can go and get yourself some as well. Insight 15 is the code. Now, let's talk some BBL heavyweights, mate. The Melbourne Stars, you know, they haven't really exactly had an amazing run the last couple of years, you know, like they, they had Glenn Maxwell out for the whole season last year when he was he broke his leg or something like that at a barbecue. Uh, do, not the not the yeah. best run, but the the best no. player out by a country mile. That hurts him. Yeah, absolutely. Just on the cans or on the tins, bit of backyard cricket or whatever was going on, and yeah, broke his leg, and that was it for the year. So that sort of put a dent in the Melbourne Stars season. It, it wasn't a, a successful season by any means, but some players did come on, and now that they've got Maxwell back, it solidifies their middle order there. For sure. There's a couple of guys that played a big part in the middle order last year as well for the Stars, and we'll talk about them. Uh, the only benefit that we have from Maxwell breaking his leg last season is we get him dirt cheap this year. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the super coach gods have um, shone upon us this uh, this lovely cheap option in Maxwell. But, mate, let's, uh, let's dive into the ins and outs for the Melbourne Stars. There is a little bit of movement, probably more than most other squads in the BBL at the moment. But Sam Harper has come across the ditch from the Renegades to the Stars. Now, he should take the glove, shouldn't he? Has to. I, I can't see anyone else keeping for the Stars. Yeah, and, and he probably gets a spot at the top order, or, or the, that's probably the way that I see it playing out too. So he's got a nice role there, Sam Harper. I've seen him in a couple of um, our, our fellow podcasters' teams as well, so there could be some um, some intrigue there with Harper. Yeah, yes and no. The thing that scares me off is 130K. So when we're talking about players at that price that can offer the same amount of scoring, 
I think there's better options elsewhere. Yeah, he's not in my team either, and I'm, I'm thinking the same as you. Uh, Joel Paris, come across from Hobart. So he, he's had a bit of a tough run with injury the last couple of years, and it's nice to see him healthy, uh, back bowling and, and doing well. I think he took four or five for in a recent Shield game. Uh, I think it was about a week ago. So it's good to see him taking some polls. Um, and, and we probably will see him in the green at some point throughout the season. I'm just not sure whether it's in round one or not, which is kind of when you want him, isn't it? Um, yeah. So yeah, a bit disappointing. We won't, we might not see him. I don't have him in my projected eleven to start. Now, mate, they've got Scotty Boland from the Hurricanes as well. He's come back home to the to the Melbourne Stars, but he's going to be with the Test squad, isn't he? I hope so. Welcome home, welcome home, big boy. Welcome home. Yeah, he'll be with the Test squad. I can't see him playing many games, and especially early on when the Stars have got three double game weeks in the first five weeks. That takes us through to what just after Christmas when. The test series finishes. Then there's a 0 1 1 1 to finish out. Barely going to be of relevance for us this year, unfortunately. Yeah, we'll talk schedule very soon, but it's a very front loaded schedule for mm -hmm. the Melbourne Stars. I think people will be jumping off come round six and just targeting other teams from there, aside from sure. probably Glenn Maxwell, who could score more on a single than some teams on a triple. So, mm -hmm. um, mate, the other four guys that they've gone and acquired, Mark Steckety from the Brisbane Heat, he comes across to the Melbourne Stars this year and probably will play a role, or I see him playing a role. He, he was pretty good for the Heat last year, so I like this for, uh, this pickup for them. Yeah, quite slippery at times too, isn't he? Gets the ball through well to the keeper. Um, balls with a new ball, quite economical. I don't mind this from the Stars, picking up a nice bowler there. And he won't be tied up with any international commitments either, so likely to have him for the full season. Yes. Uh, now, Harris Ralph probably not going to be with them for the full season, depending on whether he gets Pakistan duties uh, in the in the white ball cricket coming up at the back end of the BBL. There's a chance of that. And also with Sam Amir, who has been playing in the World Cup for Pakistan yeah. as well in the 50-over format. He, yeah. he hasn't had a great World Cup, but yeah. uh, they've got two Pakistanis here they could lose at the back end of, of BBL. Yeah, well, Sam Amir is a bit of an intriguing pick, isn't he? And we'll go into his stats later, but Harris Rolf, he's very slippery, but he's a little bit inconsistent with his line and length and tends to give away a lot of runs. So even if his bowling is three or four overs, he's normally going at nine or 10 and over. So you're not really getting many bonus points there, even if he does bowl the a lot of overs. Yeah, I see he's a kind of, I wouldn't say a very popular pick, but he's kind of popular in, in comparison to a few other picks here. So, mm -hmm. um, mate, the only other guy that they've gone and spent their first round pick in the draft on is Harry Brook, and he's been selected for England to play in the ODI and the T20 tour, uh, games there for England in the upcoming series in the West Indies tour. So, very unfortunate. They'll be without him pretty much the whole series. So, I'd, I'd probably go ahead and say that they're going to get another replacement pick for Harry Brook, considering he probably won't suit up. So be interesting to see how they use that. Yeah, what a waste of a number one pick in the draft to pick someone that's not going to be around for the full season. But to Harry Brook's credit, he's played some really good cricket over the past 18 months and deserves every crack at the top level that he gets. So unfortunate for Melbourne Stars, but interesting to see who they're going to get in. Yeah, close watch. Um, we'll keep everybody mm. updated as we get a bit closer to the season and they announce that one. Now, they've lost Liam Hatcher. He goes to the Thunder. He was pretty good last year. Don't mind Liam Hatcher. It probably doesn't bust into the Thunder starting team, but probably we'll see him in the in the uh, fluoro green, I guess we can call it, for, um, for the Thunder. Adam Zampa, though, is a very interesting one, and he's a guy that's in my team right now. Uh, he comes across to the Renegades from the Stars. Uh, I wonder how they feel about the whole man cad issue last year mm. do you reckon that they've welcomed him with there? open arms yeah oh, i don't know about that yeah they've broken up the bromance between him and the stoin though yeah they have so over mm. to the renegades for adam zampa um we'll talk about him in the next preview but joe clark also gone uh, across with zampa to the renegades and i think that's a bit of a loss for the melbourne stars because he was awesome at the top order last year for for melbourne yeah wasn't he unbelievable it wasn't until you you brought him up. I didn't really pay that much attention to him, but went back and watched some highlights and holy shit, he can hit a ball. Yep. Strong guy. Um, mm. You know, got wicket keeper jewel as well, which is handy. So we'll talk about him yeah. in a future episode. And uh, they haven't re-signed Trent Bolt and Luke Wood mm. either. Mm -hmm. So um, a few big losses there for the Melbourne Stars, but they've got some half decent ins there. So, you know, we, we can play around with those guys today in, in our starting 11. But Clint Hinchcliffe, Tom O'Connell, Sam Elliott, 
Cam McClure and Campbell Calloway uncontracted from BBL 12 as well. Not really many talking points there. So, mate, let's let's talk schedule very quickly and then we'll talk our predicted 11 on how we think they round up in, in round one. Good idea. Now, it's a very interesting start, isn't it, the first three rounds? Because you've isn't got it? a double into a bye into a double. Now, my, I actually think that people are going to be scared away by that round two bye. Mm -hmm. I'm with how you. do you feel about it? If you manage it correctly, it shouldn't be that bad. Like for me, and we'll go into how many players we've got from this team a little bit later in the podcast, but if you carry in two or three, you can easily, like you, you can max trade this year. So as long as you don't go too heavy on Brisbane Heat players and Melbourne Stars players, then it's it's quite easily manageable. And also we need to remember that the buys are actually a, an advantage if you use them correctly mm -hmm. for your VC loophole. So, you know, if, you, if you've got a non-player on a buy that you want to sub in and put the captaincy on if your VC goes large, or if your, your emergency player potentially goes massive, um, you know, the, the good thing here is that buy players lock out on the last game of the round. So you've got the whole round there, but being able to kind of sub them in. So you can take advantage of the fact that your players are on a buy. So for me, I feel like having two to potentially even three Melbourne Stars players could be an advantage, if anything, considering yeah. that in the first five rounds, they play seven games, which is, I think, correct me if I'm wrong here, it could be the most games in the first seven rounds of any team in the comp. It is correct. So the, the only disadvantage with this schedule is they've got two buyers where some other teams have zero. So in terms of planning, you just need to be on point with your planning and make sure that if you've got a lot of Stars players come round six when they've got their second buy into their three singles to finish the comp, you're offloading them very quickly in round six. And what better way than be all over the planning than by joining our Discord, which will be down below in the comments. We've only just started discussing today how we're going about our team and um, our strategies behind why and how we're picking our players. So if you want to be involved in that, click the link below and jump in the Discord and feel free to yell out at us. Absolutely. And we've just started a community team as well. So we're giving all of the discord community in our in our discord the the chance to vote on the team that we start with um so basically everyone gets a say and then we'll update trades captaincy based on what everybody tells us to in the discord so uh, and you know if we get lucky enough to do really well one week and we take out a weekly prize or something we'll donate the money to charity so uh Spot for on. a really good cause regardless and uh yeah a bit of fun letting everybody have a say and, and seeing how the community goes and how much they know about bbl supercoach so um, mate, before we dive into our predicted 11, shout out to Bonus Bank, the Australia's number one matched betting site as well. So, you know, match betting, not many people know about match betting, but it's, uh, you know, Australia's most profitable side hustle at the moment. So you can take advantage of all the bookmakers, bonus bets, promos, deposit matches, and all of those kinds of things. And you can make risk-free and tax-free income. So uh, you can go to bonusbank.com.au. And if you enter the code INSIGHT, one word, you'll get 25% off your first month of any of the premium subscriptions. And uh, the good thing is you can join and you don't have to pay a thing. You can join on their free membership and uh, your first 75 bucks is free. It's on the house. So it's basically like you're playing with the house's money. How good. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, you'll learn a ton on the way as well. So, so go to those guys and uh, use the code insight and you'll be looked after. Now, Let's talk predicted 11, mate, with uh, the Melbourne Stars and how we think they're going to round out. The, the top of the order, a bit of contention there because I I don't know whether we agree on how this is going to map out. And it's a bit tricky because I don't have Marcus Stoinis opening. I've got Tom Rogers and Sam Harper at the top. Now, Tom Rogers is a pretty obvious one because he did it last year. But what are your thoughts on, on Sam Harper opening the batting? I think it's where he's best used for him. He is, he is a good opener. He's opened with the Renegades before. But we've seen Stoinis open the batting and be very destructive in the past as well. So it's going to be a, a definite watch this space as to who opens the batting with Tom Rogers. I think he stays at the top. He's he's not a bad opener, Tom Rogers. He's not elite by any means. But what, last year he got the strike rate bonus five times, was it? Five, six times? So yeah, five times. what's that? In 33% of games, which for an opener who – you know, if the ball's moving around and whatever else, sneaking off early, getting some bonus points out of an open is nice. It's between those three, I think. Uh, Joe Burns has come into the squad. I can't or I don't see him ever opening the batting here with these guys. 
Yeah, not in this format. Joe Burns, really good long format kind of player, four day yeah. player. Sheffield Shield scores runs for fun, but I just don't. I don't. Don't get me wrong, good player, but I just think that there are better t twenty options in this squad. Now, yeah, Tom Rogers only scored fifty once last year in the BBL. Like you mentioned, strike rate five times. I'm not touching him. One point eight percent owned at the moment. Um, only he's one hundred and sixteen k. So for, for me, he's a no go. Sam Harper's <laughs> interesting though because I've seen him in a few teams. He's five point eight percent owned at the moment. Batsman wicket keeper at one hundred and thirty k. And like you mentioned at the top of the show, he is a little bit expensive, isn't he? When you've got guys like Sam Billings on a triple game week, yes, he'll bat four, um, but and he won't be keeping. But you're saving twenty k there, roughly. Going to Billings, you've got Sam Whiteman, who we've already talked about in the Scorchers preview, who's bottom dollar, basically, and has the same role opening the batting for Perth. Half, half price. <laughs> That's my yep. choice. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and Josh we need to as well. Yes. Yeah. There's so and, and Ben McDermott. Let's add him to the to the mix as well. Yeah, you know, there like go. there's so yeah. many options. And I, I know that Ben McDermott's not on a double, but I'd almost prefer to just have Ben McDermott on the bench and have the emergency on him in case he goes large one week than mm -hmm. Sam Harper and save 50K. So it's a no from us. Um, he did score 200 runs in three rounds last year. So he had that real hot streak in the middle of the BBL where he went ballistic and just, you know, three big games in a row. And then either side of that, he did absolute donuts. So mm -hmm. that, that's the risk you take with Sam Harper. He can go large and go on a streak, but he can be very quiet at times too. And then at the back end of last year, he also in a, was it a shield game? He went out obstructing the field. Just a little yeah, bit right. for our viewers okay. there. Yeah. There you no go. Good. That's an interesting one. Not timed out like uh, uh, no, I met the other day, Angelo Matthews. An Angelo Matthews. Did you see the game after that, how he got the power walk coming out to the crease? He didn't muck around that time, did he? No, the key. That's key a nice little warning shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, Rogers and Harper at the top. We've got Glenn Maxwell at three. Now, you, I don't think you can bat this guy anywhere else. I think he needs to come in at three. He needs to have the most amount of time possible at the crease to do his damage. Um, mind you, he only needs about 30 balls, doesn't he, to, to go and get 80 plus. So, you know, I think, I think they're going to keep him at three. It just makes sense. He's their best player by a country mile. Now, yep. he's got the dual position as well, which makes him even nicer to have. 118K, he didn't play last year, which means his price is dirt cheap. Um, he's 55.6% owned. And he, I'll rattle off his last five season averages in the BBL Supercoach. 63.6, mm -hmm. 62.6, 64.6, loves a six. 60.8 and 67.3. Those are the last five season averages in Supercoach for him, uh, which made him a top 10 player in four of those five seasons. Now, if you don't have him in your team and you're watching this episode, open the app real quickly. I don't care who you take out, any position at all that you want. You can't put him in wicket keeper, but you can put him anywhere else and you go and get him in your team and you use the cash elsewhere. That's as simple as that. It's just the easiest choice you will make this year is getting Glenn Maxwell in your team. Yep. Uh, there's nothing much more for me to say except don't be shit. Pick him. Yeah. Don't do yourself or, any injustice. If you're new to the game and you don't follow it that much, go back and watch his 201 not out of 129 balls for Australia about a week and a half ago. Just just and enjoy yourself. He scored the first 50 in 40 something balls as well. So the next 150 came in fuck all. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy craziness. Um, by far the best innings I think I've ever watched as just in cricket in general. So mm -hmm. anyway, we said we wouldn't talk about him too much. He's too easy of a pick. Marcus Stoinis at four, mate. He's bat bowl dual position, 116K. So even cheaper than Maxwell. We know how destructive he can be as well. He's 36.3% owned at the, at the minute, coming off a 37.7 average. Now, he didn't bowl much last year. So I think that's probably the nerves coming in with, you know, people, do we pick Stoinis? What's he going to do? Where's he going to bat? Is he going to open? Is he going to get his three overs for his economy rate bonus? Is he going to get a chance to take wickets? There's a lot, I kind of guess there's a lot up in the air for Stoinis this year, isn't there? Yeah, there is. And he's had a pretty ordinary World Cup as well, but he's the type of bloke that can just turn it on its head like Maxwell. Mm -hmm. Not as good as Maxwell, but when he goes off, he's just unbelievable to watch as well. So at 116K, even if he's just playing as a batsman, like he's good in the field as well, I think it's worth the money. Yeah, he's in my team at the moment as well. Um, he's too cheap not to have a free swing at, if I'm completely mm -hmm. honest. Um, now five and six, mate, two very big hitters in Bo Webster and Hilton Cartwright. How do you feel about both of these guys? One is very cheap and the other is coming off, off his best season in the BBL last year and starts at 173k. Yeah. Bo Webster coming in at about six foot, a hundred bat bowl option, 173k. 
Average 55.9 and he's just under 10% owned. Very, very good player. Just too expensive for me to have in at the moment. And Hilton Cartwright, this bloke hits bombs. He When he gets going, he's so good to watch. Like he's one of those blokes where you can watch him like Maxwell and you just feel yourself smiling and just engaging with the TV because he's just that electric to watch. But at 92K, just short of 30 average, he's only owned by 4% of the community. Is it just a little bit of a risk? Well, like we know he bowls. He's not going to bowl much, if at all. But at 92K, would you take a free swing at him? Look, it's a double game week. I don't hate it. The, the only issue for me is that I've got him at six at the moment, and I don't see him batting ahead of Webster, Stoinis, or Maxwell. The one thing that the Stars could do if they want to get really spicy is that they could open the batting with Cartwright. Mm-hmm. And Tom Rogers could just be the yeah. the guy that can nurdle the ball around. They get Cartwright to go out there and, and attack the opening bowlers, attack the new ball, and then they use Sam Harper at six to steady the innings. Now, my my only issue with this is I've also got Nick Larkin playing that a very, very similar role at seven. And uh, <laughs> Larkin last year batted at five all year, and that was probably because Glenn Maxwell didn't play a game last year. So I feel like Larkin, don't get me wrong, great player, but a really good anchor role in the batting lineup, good fielder as well. But um, I feel like he's in that position to kind of just get off strike and and nurdle the ball around and make sure he gets the big hitters on strike because he's got them all littered through this lineup. Even if you look after him, Nathan Coulton hits a massive ball Mm. and I've got him at eight. Um, He's an interesting one for me. 172K though is too expensive, but a 55.5 average, he's owned by less than 2% of the community at the moment. Now, do you know, do you know why? He's about a hundred years old, and he's probably going to break <laughs> down. I've uh, I was lucky enough to go to the academy with Nathan Coulton all my first year. Um, the poor guy's just been riddled with injury his whole career, and it's really unfortunate for how fucking good this guy is. He's an incredibly mm-hmm. good player, um, and also don't get me wrong, last year he's still a good player. Now, he did a great job last year, average fifty five, and I think the people that had Coulton all at the start of BBL <laughs> Supercoach last year, they were in the top. 500 to, to yeah. kick off the, the season. So it's just the, the price for me is is too high. Uh, and also, I think he's going to get rotated. I don't know whether he's fit enough to play every game. I think he's probably going to get rotated. We don't even know whether he's going to play the first two. They did it last year. They gave him rests consistently throughout the BBL because it was such a long season. So I wouldn't be surprised if he sat out the second game, if I'm completely honest. So uh, buyer beware. Now, eight, uh, let's go through 9, 10, 11, mate. Who have we got at the back end of the order? Yeah, so i got Osama Mia. Uh, bowler, 125K, less than 1% owned, but I reckon that's because no one really knows about this guy. But he's a young Pakistani leggy, strike rate of 19 with an average of 25 in T20s. So he's quite a nice pick, but will probably be playing international cricket as that backup spinner. Would you agree? I think so, yeah. I think uh, he's been playing and bowling a little bit here and there. I think he was... Um... Might have even been a concussion substitute or something like that in um, in one of the games for Pakistan recently, but he, he j- hasn't had a great World Cup. So my concerns are maybe he misses out completely. I think also he plays based on conditions because we know that Glenn Maxwell can easily bowl uh, the opening overs, can't he? He's done it on re- like on numerous occasions where he opens the bowling with his fast little round arm offies that are really hard to get away. So do they need a second spinner, a guy, a, a young leggy who could go for runs? I don't know whether they do. You're right. I think there's more of an opportunity to play two spinners at somewhere like the G than what there is playing two spinners at, say, somewhere like Adelaide Oval or Bell Reed, yeah. for example. Good shout. Yeah, longer boundaries, right? So harder mm. to get away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or if he was playing for Sydney Sixers at the SCG, that's very conducive to turn. So he'd probably get a Isn't kick it? there. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, I have him at nine purely because I think they might want a front line leggy. Leggy's a you know a dime a dozen, aren't they these days? So I, I think they might want one. Now ten and eleven though, we've got Steckity and Harris Ralph. What do you think about yeah. these two guys? Uh, Steckity's quite good, and at one hundred and eighteen k, it's it's pretty cheap. Owned by what three point one percent of the community, and we've seen some of our uh, podcasting partners, I guess, with him in their side as a bit of a pod. Uh, for me, I'm looking elsewhere mm-hmm. for a pod, but. You know, he's a, he's a very handy bowler. And then at number 11, we've got Harris Ralph, 125K, 5.6% owned. He's played in over 160 T20s, 60 internationals, averaging 25 with a ball and a strike rate of 16, eight runs per over economy. 
But for me, he's a little bit inconsistent with line and length. Yeah, he's at that awkward kind of import price that hasn't done a ton at international level, like for, in terms of performance. Like he's played a lot, but he's not. A, you wouldn't call him a top tier pick or anything like that. So, mm. um, yeah, the 125k is a little bit of a bait. I feel yeah. it's cheap enough for you to look at him, but I don't know whether I love him enough to take him over a, another guy like a Zampa or someone who's at a very similar price, or even someone who's cheaper. Spencer Johnson on the triple, if he's fit enough, you're picking him over Harris Ralph. Like there, there's just so many options at that price yeah. point. Yeah. So he's a pass for me as well. Um, we've got a few guys missing out here. Now, Joel Paris <laughs> is probably the guy to come in for a summer Amir if they mm-hmm. want to run with Glenn, Glenn Maxwell as a frontline spinner. And we need to remember, Bo Webster can bowl offies. Bo Webster, and, he bowls and he's D- a bat bowl as well. Yeah. He's an op- offies. <clears throat> Marcus Stoinis, yep. where's he going to get his overs from? Well, you know, when you when you look at Harris Ralph, you've got Steckity. Then we've mm-hmm. got, let's say Osama Mir isn't even playing. Let's just have a guess and just say maybe they strengthen the batting lineup. They bring in a Brody Couch or someone like that, you know, and, uh, you know, he drops out. You've still got Nathan Coulton to bowl his four overs. Then you've got Bo Webster, Stoinis, and Maxwell to fill the other eight overs. That's Someone misses balls. out here mm-hmm. somewhere. So, yeah. you know, uh, they are deep in terms of bowlers because you've got Maxwell and Stoinis that are uh, elite batsmen that can still do the job with the ball. So for me, yeah, there's a lot of risk in taking any of these quicks because we don't know on the rotation. We don't know how that's all going to look. So for me, I'm not touching any of the quicks here. For uh, for the Melbourne Stars, if I was to pick one, it'd probably be Stackety, based off the fact that he did a good job last year. So it's probably where I'd leave it, to be honest. Now, okay. Joel Paris, though, I like his form. I think they'll look at him throughout, and he'll be a guy that will fit into this team at some point. And he is nice and cheap as well. I think he's 80K or something. Um, mm-hmm. 4.3% of people like him as well. So I get it but I just don't see him starting unless they go without a summer mere to start. Yeah. Mate, anything else to mention here on the Melbourne Stars? They're a great option. They've got a really nice schedule. You can utilize the buys in round two. What else do we need to know about these guys before we wrap up? No, not much more. Just the strength of schedule, especially in the first six rounds. They're the team that play the most amount of games. So if you're going to capitalize on any Melbourne Stars players, do it early. Good shout. Who bowls the death here, do you think? I'd probably argue it might be Ralph and one of Cool Isle and Steckity. I'm not 100% yeah. sure. I'm confident in Cool Denial or Cool Isle, sorry, okay. playing. Ah, uh, yep. sorry, bowling the death. Yeah. Someone else, God, it's a toss up between three there for me. Mm. We will have to see. We'll get some more news as it gets a little bit closer as well. We're still over three weeks yeah. out from the comp starting, so I'd, I'd imagine that week before the BBL kicks off, it's going to be absolute turmoil with the PMs 11 and everything else going on with selections and T10 mm-hmm. tournaments going, starting, international games starting. It's There's a lot to look at. So these are just our initial reactions, I guess, to what we've seen from squads so far. So stay tuned for our up-to-date reactions as we get closer to the series uh, to the to the series kicking off but mate yep. that'll do us melbourne stars done we've got your boys next melbourne renegades stay tuned for that guys that'll come out in a day or two looking Keep forward to up. having a chat about them but uh as always guys thanks for watching hit subscribe and hit like if you like the episode as well and hit follow and leave us a review on audio if you are an audio podcast person until next time you've been listening to the insight fantasy sports podcast see you later horse out <laughs>